So one of my favorite things that some of my favorite Instagram garden accounts do on here are just garden tours. So I thought I would take you guys along on this chilly but sunshiny morning and show you what I've got cooking. So we'll start small. Um, here on my back porch, I've got some of my little pots that I've just been enjoying through the whole spring here. Um, I had some daffodils and they've kind of flopped over because that tin is too small, but I kind of like, you know, the different look they bring to things out here. A few pots, I've got some sweet peas on the windowsill waiting to get put out as soon as it dries up enough for me to put them out. They've been on the back porch for a couple weeks now so they can handle the temperatures and the sun. They've been hardened off. A few things waiting to go out into the garden, mint. A little teeny tiny parsley that I'm hoping will bounce back. Um, this is uh, my son's leprechaun garden. A new thing that I'm trying to get him a, a little fun outdoor activity. I always talk about the, uh, the ploys that I'm trying to uh, give him more things to do outside. Um, here we've got a couple pots of strawberries. So those are coming along nicely. And I'll take you over to one of my first garden areas. So here is where my sweet peas are going to be. And I have just a jumble of hyacinths, crocus, um, a few pansies that actually overwintered here, which is so weird. Um, that's never happened before. And my spinach seedlings that came back to life. Um, I thought for sure that they hadn't made it and they weren't going to sprout, but there they are, a little garden surprise. Um, here's what I call my kitchen garden. It's looking the most far along, I think. So we have lamb's ear, this big patch that needs reshaped and divided. We have creeping thyme, creeping phlox, my chives that I love so much. Um, can't remember that name. It's a tall purple flower, um, but it'll grow up about this high. Um, way back in the corner, you can't see it, but I have a New Jersey tea, which is a really cool um, native bush that gets little white flowers on it, and the hummingbirds love it. Um, so we also had some irises there, and then I'll kneel down and show you um, my first rose verbena bloom, which is kind of like a ground cover. Native birds and bees love it. And then there's my beloved Baptisia right back there. It's going to grow fast really soon here. I'll walk out and show you my monarch garden. Um, not a whole lot going on here yet because we have just some alliums popping up and everything else is just super small right now. So we have prairie drop seed, purple cone flower, um, some autumn joy sedum, Leatris, blazing star is popping up in there. And my New England asters are starting to show up as well. But as you can see, not a whole lot going on there. Um, but we've got some good bare soil areas and I've got some leaf litter in there. So just all around a bunch of great stuff for insects to overwinter in. Um, and I'll just walk you over, I have other gardens, but I'll just show you this one, um, to my new garden. So this is what I put in over the summer and then planted last fall. So I'm happy to say that a ton of stuff actually showed up um, and overwintered just fine, so I'm really excited. So along the front, more blazing star. I do have some common blue star. Uh, Amsonia is the, uh, the genus name on that, um, and I haven't seen it pop up yet. I'm really hoping it survived. Um, I've got a couple more New Jersey teas, which you can't see so well, because um, they're just starting to leaf out. Let me get you right here. So eventually that'll grow to be 
a three foot round ball and just be like a nice little size at the corner of the fence. Um, I have a native winterberry or native holly right here. Um, and then in here I just have a bunch of Leatris. Here's my kitty. Um, Leatris, some goldenrod, purple coneflowers. I have a swamp milkweed centered right there. Mountain mint. Oh gosh, tons of natives in there. Um, and then in the center, I actually have my veggie garden, which has been so much fun. And it's very visible right out my living room window. So that's really nice to look out and see. Along this wall here is going to be my zinnias and dahlias. So what I'm a little nervous about is they do get a lot of sun here, but it's on the east wall of my house. So I'm just hoping that the dahlias and zinnias get enough sun in that area to really bloom. But it's an experiment and we'll see how it works. Um, and then here we have my spice bush. So very small, but these are the yellow blooms that the spice bush gets. Um, it's very little. Um, it's going to get about anywhere between 6 and 12 feet tall at maximum size. And so my plan is to prune it up from the bottom so that we keep that nice like vase shape with more leafed out at the top that kind of arches over us as we walk by. Um, so you can see I do have some tulips that I planted all along this row here. And yeah, quick little look. In my vegetable garden, a couple tulips that my six-year-old wanted to plant in that specific place to cover up the old tomato plant stems that were there at the time. Uh, I have some kale and some broccoli in there too. So they're coming along nicely. So yeah, I'll show you a view from the other side. Some more pansies that overwintered miraculously. So yeah, here's one of my favorite new views. And it is just gonna be packed full of flowers. All right, I hope you've enjoyed my garden tour and have a great day, everybody.